namna ka hala me kale hu e hale le hu ya no ya na ka no e o ka uno ya e no ine e ane ho yo ka hikimai a hikimai no o ko a hikipu no me ke aloha aloha e aloha e aloha <laughs> ano elani keia no kane o he o ahu mai au a ha oli au ke lo na pu ana mai o kako. Hi, I'm Noelani, <laughs> and I'm a Hawaiian. The fact that I'm able to stand here today proud and say that is something I owe to a lot of people who fought long and hard for me able to do that, because it wasn't always like that. For a time, Hawaiians lost their way because they were told that their language, their culture, and practically their very existence was worthless. You see, we not only had our Hawaiian kingdom overthrown, our cultural practices were banned. Hula was banned. Hawaiian language was outlawed; it was not allowed to be taught in schools. In fact, there's a segment of the population that still refuses to be identified as Native Hawaiian and is ashamed of their heritage. The fact that I can stand here today and introduce myself in Hawaiian is owed to a period of history called the Hawaiian Renaissance in the 1970s. Amongst other events, it included the protests of the bombing of Kahoolawe by the United States Navy, the inception of the Merry Monarch Hula Festival competition, and the launching of Hokulea, the first Polynesian double-hauled voyaging canoe to set sail in centuries. In 1976, Hokulea set sail from Hawaii to Tahiti. And after 32 days at sea, was greeted by thousands of people on the beach of Papua to Tahiti. She became a beacon of hope and pride, not only for Hawaiians but Polynesians in general, because Hokula and her crew demonstrated not only the intellect but the spirit of our ancestors, and it reinstated that pride. In fact, there were so many people that showed up on the beach to show their aloha for her. They wanted to touch her and try and get on board. They nearly sank her. <laughs> yeah, you imagine trying to kick people off as you're trying to greet them. In 2014, Honkula embarked on a three-year voyage around the world. Our ancestors not were only just great navigators; they were great stewards of these islands. The time that the first Europeans came, the journals of Captain Cook talked about, you know, large populations, maybe 800,000. That, that's the median. It, it could be even higher. It's approaching maybe the numbers of people that are living on Hawaii today. They figured it out. How to live well on these islands, and I think that is the challenge of the time for planet Earth and all of humanity: is to figure that out. How are you going to do that? Hokulea is pulling us into a direction of asking the question: Are you going to be responsible, and are you going to take action? Are you going to do something with what you have? You got a voyage in canoe. In a generation, Hokulea has sailed over 140,000 nautical miles. To reunite the world's largest oceanic nation. Today, Hokulea voyages around the planet with the message of Malama Honua, or caring for island Earth, with a firm belief that blending traditional and modern technologies will help us find our way to a healthier future. So, in 1995, I was a young girl on the shores of Kaihi Oahu, and I had the opportunity with my fellow classmates. To welcome Hokulea home for one of her deep sea voyages with several other Polynesian canoes. At that moment, I knew Hokulea was in my future. Several years later, I had the opportunity to sail on Hokulea from Hawaii to Tahiti on her worldwide voyage, and subsequently a few more legs. The name of the voyage was Malama Honua, and I can tell you it was an amazing experience. Malama Honua literally translates to caring for the earth. But based on my voyaging experiences and what I've been able to see around the world, I can tell you that that translation does not do the intent or spirit of the voyage any justice. In fact, to quote a very recent Star Trek episode, "Translation is not the essence of understanding." Hokulea was Google tracked, and her position was broadcast on the internet for everyone to see. So, if you wanted to know where she was, you could find out. That made our voyage as crew members very different to prior voyages in Hokulea's history. One of the legs we did took us across the Okeechobee Waterway in Florida, and because we were Google tracked, everywhere there was a bridge, 
a lock, or anywhere that the waterway came close to the road, there were people waving, shouting, holding signs, hoping just to get a glimpse of Hokuda. See, there's a lot of Hawaiians in Florida. <laughs> But they were just hoping to get a glimpse of Hokula, not just because she's an amazing canoe, but because of what she represents. She represents home and the spirit that she brings with her, that spirit of aloha. And they wanted to come and show their aloha for her. So after we got out of the waterway, we proceeded up the east coast via the intercoastal waterways. We had a series of stops planned out, but we also had backup stops in case we didn't make it as far as we needed to for the day. One of those backup stops was Indian Harbor, Florida. And there were people on the dock waiting for us. By the time we tied up, we were given shelter, food, and transportation. A community came together to show aloha not only for the canoe, but for strangers. We didn't know them. For a crew they didn't even know. As a result, we stayed in Indian Harbor a little longer. Uh, we had an impromptu celebration. We came together, we shared stories, songs, ate food, watched videos, and I had the opportunity to talk to a few of the Polynesian attendees in particular. They told me that while they knew about Polynesian cousin or friend down the road, they had not come together like this until the canoe showed up. And ultimately what I'm getting at is the collection of experiences that I had in Florida and Indian Harbor in particular is when I really started to understand what we were doing. Because while well, Malama Honua means to care for the earth, and we thought we're sailing around with this message of protecting the planet and caring for the planet, we were really sailing around with the message of aloha. See, aloha doesn't just mean hello and goodbye. It's not a word you can look up in the dictionary. Although if you do it, you'll find a really long paragraph of definitions. Aloha is something you have to actually experience. I feel that it was that aloha that the indigenous cultures around the world were a little bit more receptive to. Because whenever we had the opportunity to interact with a local tribe or indigenous culture, we, we tried our best to ask permission to come ashore, probably with an oli or a chant, like I opened with today. And you know what they told us? No one had ever asked before. <laughs> they, were, they were very receptive and appreciative of our, the aloha that we showed them and the respect we had for them. And it started a dialogue. We were able to communicate with them. And even though we're very special and unique around the world, we all have our special differences, common threads began to emerge of aloha and respect and pono, which is balance for both our relationships and actually our relationship with the aina, the land itself. It's that same aloha that allowed me to grow up in Hawaii and learn who I am as a Hawaiian. Because you see, the only way I was able to get here today is the aloha of countless educators, mentors, and family members who dedicated a lot of their time and aloha so I could do this. In fact, I still have lunch with some of my elementary school teachers to this day. Now I have the opportunity to pay it forward. I work in a Hawaiian-focused charter school. I have the opportunity to talk to students about who they are and establish that guiding principle and value, aloha. And talked about how they're related to the aina itself, the land, and establish that aloha for it. And I would actually say that aloha has probably played a larger role in my career as an educator than any math lesson I ever taught. And We've actually come full circle in many other ways. We not only teach language in the schools now, but hula, which was banned, is now celebrated. In fact, it's taught in prisons. And those people who lost their way, maybe they didn't have the same opportunity as me, are now able to learn hula in the prisons and learn more about who they are. It's because hula is not just a performance that looks pretty. It's a genealogy. It's a story. Sometimes it's a lesson. And they're actually able to receive the aloha from the teachers who take their time to spend it with them. And for some of them, maybe the first time they've received that aloha. So they're able to better understand aloha and who they are. An inmate at the San Quentin prison was recently quoted as saying, pre-hula, I was a really dark person, but hula really springboarded it for me. I think had I not found myself spiritually, I still would be searching. To be fair, aloha is, can be a difficult thing to do. You have to start by knowing who and what you are. And to quote my mentor, Nainoa Thompson, we can't care for something we don't understand. For Hawaiians, that understanding begins with our mo'oku'oho, which is our genealogy. We trace our roots back to Wakea and Ho'oho'oku'kalani, who were parents to a stillborn child that they named 
Paloa Nakalo Kapalili. Paloa for short. They planted Haloa in the Aina, in the land, and he grew to become the first Kalo, the first taro plant. Their second child, they also named Haloa, became the first Hawaiian. And so in this Mo'olelo, which means story, we've already established a cyclical relationship of aloha, care, and pono, which is balance. You see, our eldest sibling cares for us, but only if we take care of him and where he lives. And so really, Hawaiians were already eco-friendly well before the modern day movements. <laughs> and actually, I would say that going forward, society will probably start to look backwards and start to embrace the indigenous knowledge and values of all of the indigenous peoples throughout the world. In fact, just harnessing wind and wave energy is probably more in line with an indigenous way of thinking, of working with the environment versus against it. And so, this is my charge to you. Find a little aloha in all you do, in your relationships, in your community, and your service. If we all take the time to find a little bit of aloha, then maybe we'll find pono. Um, in the oral traditions of my culture, I'll end with a song about my roots as a Hawaiian. My kapi ina akala iha eha e ai kamole olu hole hua e ya ko kama e e mama aloha na halo. Kupuna